the same. Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zhengkong, homage to the 16 Karmapa, the Dharma King, and homage to Master Dukdan Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today, Amoga Basa Lokeswara Guanyin Bodhisattva. Simu, Dutan City, Rinpoche. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, temple directors, all disciples present here and over the internet, and our participating VIPs today from Academia Seneca, the Academian Professor Zhu Ziyi and Mrs. Stu. Thank you for coming. The Chief Secretary of the Taiwan Government, Mr. Zheng Peifu and Mrs. Zheng. And from the U.S. Golden Stone Entertainment Company, the main director, Mr. Ivan Lin. The scholar groups of Trubida School, Professor Wang Di, <laughs> Professor Gu Haoxiang, <laughs> Professor Cai Guo Yi, <laughs> Professor Ye Su Wen, <laughs> Professor Hong Xin Yi, <laughs> Dr. Yu Jiang Cheng, and medical doctor Lin Jun An, the president of the Worldwide Lotus Light Charity Society, Master Chang Lin, the president of the Taiwan Lotus Light Charity Society, Mr. Li Chun Yong. Uh, the representative of the council person from Tainan City, the general manager of Jing Yi Enterprise Company, Ms. Zhang, from the Indian Entertainment Company, the model, Mr. Ding. Mr. and Mrs. Zhu Jinsui, a well-known entrepreneur from Hong Kong, Datuk Kenneth Loy and family, and a Datuk from Malaysia, Mr. Li Junsheng. Producers for the Great Perfection Dharma, Hevaja Exposition and Development Stages of Tantrayana, Master Lin Yue. From CTITV Taiwan, producers for the Gini Dian Sang Sintan, Ms. Rebecca Shiyachi. We would also like to offer gratitude to the presidential candidate of KMT party, Mr. Zhu Lilun, 
and the vice presidential candidate, Ms. Wong Ruxuan, for their well wishes and flower bouquet for the third time, to wish the Amogabasa Guanyin Homa ceremony goes well. And also to Lu Guichong for donation of 100,000 NT dollars. And the Hua San Da Xing Design Center and the Auction Center also for their donation of 100,000 NT dollars. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? Good afternoon. I'm a normal Konnichiwa. Salamatiam. Salamatiam. We all know the Amogabasa Lokaswara's mudra that the last three fingers upright and the index fingers and the thumbs are interlacing. That's the mudra of Amogabasa. Lokeswara. And the sixth syllable is a white mo and the mantra. That's the mantra. And the statue, as you can see, three faces, each with three eyes and four arms. One arm is holding a nectar vase, one arm is holding a lotus, and one hand is holding a lasso or noose, and the other hand is holding a total of four hands. So what is the other hand holding? Let me ask you. Chanting beats, Amala. Because I cannot see chanting beats in this statue. Oh. It's it's there, but it's really small. Primarily, it's about the non-empty. As I said before, that your wishes will come back non-empty. So the primary supplicants today are, are many. So which means you would return uh, non-empty-handed. Whatever you wish for, it would be fulfilled. So we pray to Amogabasa Lokeswara. His vow is that so that all who pray would be fulfilled, their prayers would be granted. So the lasso, as I said before, you know, the spirits, 
they, some of them are very befuddled and some are confused and they don't want to go to the Buddha land or pure land. But if you pray to Amogabasa, the lasso will tie or bind this person and throw him or her to the pure land. So today, if you are a primary supplicant, then you, are, you have great confidence. Like if you want to bar to deliver your ancestors or friends, and they will all be guided to the pure Buddha lands. So Amoga Pasa Kuan Yin is one of the seven Kuan Yins, and he has great vows. The vows of these seven Kuan Yins are extremely great. And their Dharma power is also incredible. And this Kuan Yin is rare and superior. And today is an election day for Taiwan's president. But he only sent a flower bouquet. He didn't become primary supplicant. So we'll see what Amogabasa Kuan Yin thinks. They start counting the votes. I didn't say anything because we cannot say who to vote. That would be violating the rules. So the voting has ended. It ends at one thirty, four thirty. Four? Four o'clock. So So there's no need to pray now. It it's already ended. So it's fixed. So we don't need to say anything. So this is the presidential election day of Taiwan. So electing president, legislators, huh? and the party. You don't know? Three. President, vice president, legislators, or cabinet members, and also the party. <laughs> so what's the result? I don't know. But we will know after the, the counts, we'll know. I didn't want to uh, predict who would win because uh, it's all determined by the media. So I didn't count. This is the only time I didn't, didn't prophesy. The only time I didn't prophesy for a presidential candidate, presidential election. And there's really no more to say. We'll know later. Amogabasa before, primarily he's one of the seven Kuan Yin's and primarily it's about the non-empty and the lasso.
that the Dharma power and the power of his vow is incredible, a very supreme Kuan Yin. And Kuan Yin Bodhisattva is very compassionate, has great compassionate power. He's delivering sentient beings in the Saha world. On my shrine in Taiwan, I have two huge statues of Kuan Yin. I have many statues of Kuan Yin, and, but there are two of them that are big. One is the Aulung Kuan Yin, and the other one is wish-fulfilling jewel Kuan Yin. And this wish-fulfilling jewel Kuan Yin Dharma will be transmitted again in the Fu Yu Lijang Temple in Xinju in Taiwan. And just now, Taiwan Lijang Temple had the ritual of the besieging of a Buddha Dharma. Is it one Dharma ceremony or two? Two Dharma ceremony. One is Samantabhadra Bodhisattva and the other one is Vajrapani. So when do we transmit the Samantabhadra Bodhisattva? It's uh, February 20th. February 27th, Vajrapani and February 20th, Samantabhadra. As far as I remember, that I will only transmit Buddha Dharma of Vajrapani for the grand ceremony. I didn't know there would be Samantabhadra Bodhisattva's Dharma transmission. And I thought the two deities for one ceremony. It turned out that two different ceremonies. Is it a special occasion? No. Is it for the New Year? No. After the New Year. I didn't know that you asked for the Samantabhadra Bodhisattva. I only knew about Vajrapani. But let me tell you that Vajrapani Bodhisattva is actually Samantabhadra Bodhisattva. Samantabhadra Bodhisattva is actually Vajrapani. You didn't know. But Mahayana Buddhists believe that Samantabhadra Bodhisattva is Vajrapani. There are two opinions that Vajrapani is an emanation of Samantabhadra Bodhisattva. And then there are others that are in the view that Vajrapani is Mahastama Prapta's Bodhisattva's emanation. Mahastama Prapta is an attendant to Amitabha Buddha along with Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. So there are two views about Vajrapani. Some people say that Vajrapani is an emanation of Samantabhadra and others is an emanation of Mahastama Prapta. So Happy New Year everyone. Happy New Year. When is the Chinese New Year? How many more days? Twenty-two days. So in 22 days, it will be Chinese New Year. So here, I would like to wish a happy Chinese New Year in advance.
And next, we will talk about the Great Perfection Dharma. At this great occasion, we should talk out of our hearts. We should just chat. We have so many things happening, so many noises in Tributa School, creating problems. I have no cell phones, no iPads, no computers, and I don't know how to get on the internet. I didn't hear anything. There is a Master Hui Jun as an attendant, along with Master Lian Yu Du Simu. And, they, and she always got on the internet every day and reported lots of news to me. She's creating troubles, problems, these two hobbit people. Simu herself rarely get on the internet, if not for these two. The two of us live really well, but these two hobbit people creating troubles, actually, they're very helpful. Master Lian Yu is doing the housework, the cooking, and all the housework, uh, washing clothes, um, cleaning the floors, were all done by Master Lian Yu. So one is laboring using her body, and the other one is laboring with her mind is Master Hui Jun. She never moves. So you can tell from the figure. When Master Hui Jun is seated, this is very stable and Master Lin Yi moves around quickly. So one is physical, the other one is mental, doing mental work. And one is physical work, helping Simu. They are all good masters, and they are of the same height, Hobbit people. I asked them to stand up in Macau. And today, I would like to ask these two Hobbit people to stand out. Please come out. And, and there are two tall attendants to also please come forward. Master Lian Ya and Reverend Lian Zhen. Are they here? Please, all. <laughs> They're two short ones and two tall ones. This <laughs> <laughs> They look like a city god temple. So the seventh lord, the eighth lord, these this four attendants help greatly. Thank you. So they're the seventh and the eighth lord of Grandmaster. So if he is the seventh and the eighth lords, then Sijun would be the city god. 
这个闲话少述，这个要讲到正题呢。So Chatting. Let's talk. Let's get to the point. We have a very sensational topic this week. I have a good friend who lived in Kaohsiung. He made a phone call to me. I don't get the phone call, but we have a phone at home. And he asks, "Are you about to die soon?" Someone wrote on the internet that that your organs have. Have deteriorated. That the smell of your urine is really bad, and your organs have decayed and declined. I didn't feel anything about it, but I have an illness. Is to look at my own urine when I pee. Oh my God! Even my urine is problematic, so let me try. But no bubbles in my urine. No proteins in it. So that's not right. I feel disappointed, but there are no bubbles in my urine. Every time I pee, I would pay attention. There are some. Some foams and then disappeared. But someone wrote that I have foams. And I bent down and smell the pee. Is it smelly or fragrant? There's no smell. I can smell anything. So I felt upset. Oh no. How come there's no smell? So I took a glass. And then I took a look and smell it. And I put my finger in it and tasted it. And smelled it. It's very light and fragrant. Can you drink it? Can you smell it? So drink the pee, not drinking the wine. So I took a sip. It was very light and tasty, almost like a beer. And I said, good, then I'll take the whole glass. I swallowed it all. And I felt energetic. And I look really good. 
罗宪然先生。哎，我告诉你啊，我从美国出发的时候，我们都要身体健康。Left for America. When I left America, I had the medical checkup, and in America we have regular checkup. My doctor, family doctor, is Dr. Ko at the Overlake Medical Hospital, and he called me and said it's time for your whole body medical checkup. And the result, the family doctor said, "Congratulations! Everything passed. All there's none that's red. Everything is normal." First. The eyes, 1.0 and 1.1. Is that good? Yes. And the heart beats. My heart beats is 65 per minute. <laughs> but if I see a beautiful girl, it will become 75. But Either 65 or 75 is normal. So my heart is good. My blood pressure 122 over 70. Cholesterol 90. If it is over 200, that would be over, but mine was 90. And good cholesterol, 50, and the bad cholesterol, 40. And my blood sugar, on average, is 5.8. So if it's over 7, then you need to take medicine. But mine is 5.8. Is that good? Yes. And my uh, liver function is normal. My kidney function is normal. <laughs> I have no... Um, sexual disease. Our medical checkup is uh, complete. <laughs> Does Simu have? No. My sex ability, of course, I'm over 70. It's extremely good. No problem. You do it for three hours, right, Simu? So, I achieved the world record in this case. I practiced the youth um, practice. So that's why I say that I'm 17 this year, and next year I'll be 27. Is it true? Is it good? So today, honestly speaking, 
that I showed uh, my upper body when I was six, 70. And there were about a thousand people present. Do I have a, a chest muscle and back muscle? And uh, <laughs> all the, the triceps, biceps. So, maybe I take off my clothes again and show you if I feel like it. I can show all, I can <laughs> show it all to you, but even for a second it's not good, especially we have a webcast that will show all over the world. But uh, the upper body I have shown you when I was 70. Please raise your hand if you saw it. Many. They could be witness to that. Was it great? Yes. So copying what Master Hui Jin said, your mother good. <laughs> in Chinese? Uh -uh. In Taiwanese. Your mother good. Every day, Grandmaster exercise and practice. In the morning, I would write articles, and afterwards, I would do my tantric practice, push-ups for 200 times. They will perform during my practice, and every afternoon, I would exercise for two hours. Exercise, two hours. I never skip a day that every afternoon I would exercise for two hours. Ever since 2010, until 2016, every afternoon I would exercise for two hours. I never skipped a day. And in the morning, when I got up, I would exercise according to Golden Mother instruction. As soon as I woke up, I would sit on the bed and I would rotate my eyes 14 times clockwise and then I would open my eyes and look as far as I could, as far as I can. That's why I don't have to wear eyeglasses. You need to learn that. And then you tap your teeth 36 times in full concentration. So if you're old and your teeth are not very strong, then please don't, tight, don't tap too hard. So Golden Mother taught this. Rot Close your eyes, rotate clockwise 14 times, then open both eyes and look as far as you can. That's the exercise of the eyes, and then the exercise of the teeth. Tap your teeth, upper and lower teeth tapping 36 times, and do it in concentration. And then 
tap a drum, your ears, close both ears with your palms, and then snap your fingers 49 times, 7 times 7. Or using your fingers, tap on the back of your head or the neck area. Close both ears with both palms and then tap. That's ear drumming. Then, as you age, you will not lose any hearing. Or you don't have any dysfunction of the ears. So remember this, the exercise of the eyes, of the teeth, and of the ears. And what is the exercise of the nose? By performing the nine cycle Buddha breathing. And the exercise of the mind or the brain is by performing visualization. They were all they are all exercised. And when you shower at night, you take off all your clothes and let me teach you. First, what do you do? If you have tumor or don't have tumor, you first visualize Golden Mother appearing in the space above you. And your hand is holding the tumor area. Or say if you have a breast cancer or colon cancer or stomach cancer or tumor or gallstone, then use your hand to touch the area. Then you visualize Golden Mother emit white light upon the tumor and red light upon your tumor. And the blue light from her heart chakra emit it on your tumor, and the tumor would open. And all the insects would fly away from the tumor, or all beings, or human beings, or bees, as an example. You visualize bees flying out of that area. And that's to cure tumor growth or cancers. And you recite Golden Mother's Mantra, Om Jinmo Siti Hom. You recite continually and visualizing that all the insects or beings flying out from the tumor. So that's the method to eradicate growth, remember. So, if you have a tumor or growth on your neck, then you recite Om Jinmu Siti Hom, and all the animals uh, would uh, get out from that area. All the beings that you killed in the past lives would, uh, would leave that area. And for the heart, and the lungs at the center of the chest, then you rub 50 times from top to bottom, then you will not have any arteriosclerosis. Uh, I saw Chan Chan Yang. The boss of Guo Tai had the heart attack. He's an artist and had an art center. The founder left at 66, left, passed away at 66. So you rub 50 times from top to bottom. And then for the navel area is for non-leaking. You use palms to wrap around your navel in circles 
on your abs. And then clockwise, and then counterclockwise 14 times each, so that the inner fire tumor would be ignited and to strengthen your non-leaking so that your lower body well, is not cold. And then you rub your kidneys, both, you place both palms on the kidneys and rub your kidneys is to improve your kidney function. As you age, your kidney would kidneys would weaken, so you wrap them 200 times each day, sometimes even more, until the kidneys get really warm. Then you will not have any kidney dialysis. And then I also perform the short practice. One day I may show you. I'll get up and place a bucket of water and I would show my upper body and then I would wrap my lower body with towel and I'll walk from here to there and there to here. I'll show you that thing. So do you know, can you master the non-leaking practice? If you can, then we'll place an empty bottle and then there would be half a glass. It's golden color and it's very fragrant. And then, I, wearing this lama skirt, I would kneel, and when I show you the glass, it would be empty. I will absorb all the urine back into the body. <laughs> so that's the accomplishment of the youth practice. So just with lama skirt without anything else and place an empty glass and then pee into it and then I would uh, squat over it and then I would suck in and then suck in all the water and then I'll show you the empty glass. Grandmaster, ever since in his forty until now, never leak any cement. Not even a drop. So, how could I have protein in my pee? <laughs> so, what I just taught you about the Golden Mother's practice just follow my instructions. It only takes a short period of time when you wake up or in the shower.
if you follow it, it's very beneficial. That's the seven great exercises of Golden Mother. And the youth exercise, I cannot teach you now because the womanizers would be problematic, would be troublesome. Actually, everybody is a womanizer, but whether you can control yourself or not, if you can, then you're not a womanizer, but if you cannot, then you are. Actually, someone did the statistics that a man would think of sex every few minutes. Only spiritual cultivators would be mindful of the Buddhas, of the mantras, of the visualization, of mantra recitation, of samadhi. Then you would not become pervert. Otherwise, everybody is a ledger. How about for the woman? Because I'm not a woman, so I don't know. And let me also mention this. Simo reminded me is that for Grandmaster to take a, a two day off every week. But my habit is I always do write and practice every single day. I never rest. So write, practice, exercise, grateful, uh, cultivating, being happy every single day. And I'm still very energetic. So as long as I'm happy, it's fine. I don't need two days off every week. I never took a day off. I never take a day off. Hmm? Uh, Taiwanese love to learn from the Americans because the two-day weekend in America, Taiwanese also pick that up and they learn more and more. You don't learn the diligence, but you learn the laziness. Americans, Europeans, Australians are all lazy. Canadians, the Caucasians are lazy. No, we shouldn't be prejudiced against them, but they are enjoying life more. So Taiwanese don't learn the good parts, like they have good highways. Instead, they learn to take two days off every week. Saturday, Sunday off. And the no and the clinics are closed, so you have to go to emergencies if you need doctors. But it's not the case in the past. Now for the New Year's everything's closed. But in the past they are still open. So the diligence of Taiwanese is disappearing these days. Now talking about uh, <laughs> inviting Grandmaster for dinners, they are arguing against each other, and Master Lian He wrote a really good article. That Grandmaster in that uh, more private settings can ask Dharma questions or can share their Dharma experiences. For example, like the questions asked by the media team, Grandmaster would answer it and give Dharma teachings. So if nobody's inviting us 
For dinners, then we have to make our dinners. So it's okay if you say that you're in the opinion not to invite dinners, grandmaster for dinners anymore. Then why don't you <laughs> offer the money for the food? Because as monks, they take in offerings offered by people, the same with Sakyamuni Buddha. There were many people making offerings to the Buddha. You know, Devadatta, uh, in his criticism of the Buddha, there were three key points. One is that Sakyamuni Buddha live in a good abode, good place, Jetavana. And he asked why, asked the Buddha, why do you live in such a good residence? Second, Sakyamuni Buddha, how could you wear such luxurious dragon robes? Your spiritual cultivator, you should just wear rags, like the arhats. How come you live in such a good place? and wear beautiful, I mean, dragon robes and nice garments. And third, Sakyamuni Buddha, how come every morning, noon, and night, you accept offerings or dinner offerings from people? You're violating the precepts of the Sangha. How come you accept offerings of the people? So, of these three uh, criticism or questions asked by Devadatta, one of them involves a meal offerings. So, meals should be offered to the Buddha. So Devadatta blamed Sakyamuni Buddha for those. So if you don't allow any meals offerings, then you should come to my kitchen and cook for us. Especially, cannot say, if you're in the opinion of no meals offerings, you have to cook special meals like abalone and shark fin and delicious foods from the oceans and from the lands, <laughs> including the precious jewels and gems. We can eat them too or wear them. <laughs> and Grand Master likes <laughs> uh, antelope uh, horns and uh, turtle shells and Snakes and dogs, meat, dog meat. <laughs> Amitabha, the Buddha is compassionate. I've spoken more than I should. But Grandmaster can bardo deliver. Is capable of bardo deliverance. So why did a Qigong living Buddha eat dog meat? Because he could bardu deliver the dog. How could he take in alcohol? Because when he drank the alcohol, the hands and uh, the, the alcohol would be uh, disposed from the hands. You want to see the wine? Here it is. But if you haven't reached such a realm, then you cannot eat and drink those. So should I take off my clothes to show everyone as an ending? Yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> but taking off the clothes. We need the music for that.
Yes, I know. Okay, let me take off my clothes. It's not illegal to take the upper clothes, right? Sijun, <laughs> Grandmaster, has no cares. Nothing matters to Sijun. So what's the big deal? Let me take off for you to see. Oh, Lian Zhe and Su Mu said, Oh, no, no. No, please, no. And I will do push-ups for 30 times. Okay, close your eyes now and don't peek.
健康就是我们的幸福。开心吗？是赠送给大家的新年礼物。我们祝福师尊永远健康、强壮、长寿。真的是十七岁的体魄，是吗？可能在场真正十七岁的年轻人也没有这种体魄哈，好像。那个伏地挺身，可能二十下也做不到。我那天有偷看到一位师兄，伏地挺身二十下就，好，所以师尊真的不是盖的哈，童子功。师尊今天跟大家教了很多的法，然后师尊也每天健身。师尊展现给大家看，是也是希望大家也要每天的健身、强健、修法，是吗？ The master showed us that by doing exercise every day, you would be able to achieve such a physical stamina as well. 今天不是只有总统大师。So today. Not only we have the presidential election by grandmasters showing this, it's more sensational than the presidential election. This is the physical state of grandmaster at 72. That's quite incredible. We are really proud of our guru. Okay. Okay, that's all for today. Omani Benihom.